Hello there. So I've been doing front end, or front end development now for about five years or something. And I was always annoyed and intimidated by animations. So I've never really used animations that much. However, my current project, my current side project, I really wanted to use animations because it's like a little bit like a game the app that i'm building and so animations would really add a nice flair to it it's possible to use native css animations but i really dislike using css currently i use chakra ui so you know like an abstraction i like using the i don't like the having star sheets i like having the props or yeah the star prop so the inline CSS I preferred much more. And so I use Chakra, which allows me to have like a lot of pre-defined stuff, use props. And I wanted a good solution for animation that is not too much hands-off, but not too much hands-on either. And I found Motion Framer. I found it so far to be really good. There might be other libraries that are better that I, if I try them, I like them more. But so far, Framer Motion and their integration with Chakra UI, it has been quite nice. So that's what I've ended up using. And yes, yeah, so I'm going to show you a little bit how I implemented it for this small project. So as you can see, one of the nice things about this is the are the animations. Without the animation, it looks a bit more bland. And so how did I do that? Well, so first of all, what kind of animations do we have? We have this bar that goes down. I first did this with a manually by myself with a set interval. So let's see it in the code now from the beginning. So this is a more early version of this. And let's go to quiz to see what's going on here. So I saved the height in a in, in state. You can see it here. And then I had this interval. So whenever a user would have it answered or the, the state would go to the running, the is running, it would check if it's, in case it's running, it would create this interval. But this is like, I don't think it's very performant. I think it's better to use a animation for that, which I ended up doing. I separate the logic by having the animation in this case in this way so i have a component that then takes on the relevant props for the animation i could probably optimize this even further but yeah this is how i do it and then i pass it to children and that has been a good way of doing it the problem is that there's a lot of there's a bit of repetition going on i think so if I would scale this, if I had even more animations, I would probably look to optimize this even further. But for just having a handful of optimizations, animations, having a handful of animations, this works fairly well. Also, this needs to be refactored a bit, but that's beside the point. So yeah, this is the how I had the animation. And it is notable that they also didn't work so well together with my set interval. So I figured it probably internally maybe use refs or something. And yeah, so React doesn't get updated, doesn't re-render, but my set interval, it caused many re-renders, which was really bad. Anyways, I'm gonna see if I can find the, the animation branch. So yeah, I found a commit that seems to look good. So this is my initial thing when I was learning how to use this. And you can see that when I use this, the when I use the handmade animation for the countdown bar, it's kind of broken right now. But after I, yeah, this was really messy. After I, yeah, here I tried to, to use that and I, wasn't aware you could could just use the you could just change the height in the animation. I thought I had to have like a big block that I didn't big block that I then moved downwards. But yeah, it worked out at the end. 
damn this is a little bit tough to keep track of so now why is this gray i don't know but it's weird anyways i'm just gonna go to the regular one yeah so now it all works fairly well and so i've got a small animation that bubbles up then if i get it right this one goes up a bit but you don't see it anymore as much and this twist obviously and then yeah th getting this was really important getting this going down and then uh, when it goes down it triggers this next state for that i use this hook so you can see in the countdown animation i use and on animation is over which then is this function let me jump there quickly here this one which has all that logic and yeah i don't think i'm even using a hook so you can use a hook that gives you the value but i found that just uh, using this thingy here on animation complete will be enough and so yeah and then there's actually a little bit of a cheat on how i um so there's a transition so when this runs out actually just like in this state after some time it will go to the next one and using things like set interval or set time out they work really poorly somehow so because this other thing worked so well what i did is i added this one here so i can just show you how it looks like so i have this um small thing here that spins and i found out that even if i hide it it will still happen and thus uh, it will get triggered so on animation complete will trigger the the next transition yeah but i thought it looked ugly i thought it looks more minimalistic and nicer without it so that's why i have it like this with the yeah with this uh both are hidden yeah so i hope you found this really useful and yeah thanks for watching see you later bye